Once again, it's Pastor John Carlo, Flat Down Church, the Christian Pentecostal Church, and we're studying a very interesting aspect of God, and that's the ability for Doctor, our Doctor, God in Heaven, gives us an opportunity to understand salvation, the doctrine of salvation. How in the world could God allow us who are sinners to be saved? And this is the amazing part of this whole story, the doctrine of salvation, of forgiveness. As we look at through the word of God, we've seen that the source of salvation is actually Jesus Christ in the sense that he became the sacrifice for our sins. We are forgiven because of what Christ did for us on the cross. We also see that no one else could do this. Our salvation comes because someone gave his life for us, and that was Jesus. He is able to save us because he is the one who shed his blood on Calvary for us, for our sins. Look what it says here in Hebrews 2 and 18. For in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, he is able to help them that are tempted. Remember, Jesus was uh, approached even by Satan himself, tempted, but he overcame the situations where he was and gave us a, an example of we can live in this world and be sinless if we tried. But of course, we know that's almost impossible these days, especially. Look what it says here in Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. What a, what a sentence. Above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. For I know, I know now that I have believed and am persuaded that he, Christ, is able to, to keep that which is commended, committed against or unto, unto him against the day that we all stand before the Lord. And finally, we see in Jude 24, it tells us, whereof he is able to also to save them to the uttermost that come unto, to, unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth, make intercession for them. Isn't that amazing that Christ is making intercession for us every day along the way? And do we deserve it? Not really at all. And also it goes on to say that now unto him that keeps us, keep us from falling and to present us, he's going to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. Wow. Wow. Again, we see very quickly that God through Christ is willing to save us. And all that we see in Jesus' ministry we see so many examples of that. And even today, as he is standing in heaven, inter inter intervening for us, while we, we as believers tend to uh, sin at times. Let's take a look at salvation, this word that we're talking about. Salvation is something that has to go through the blood, Hebrews 2 and 22. It says also that, the blood has to be innocent blood. So salvation can only come through someone who is innocent. And we know, unfortunately, that every one of us who have ever been born on this, on this planet of Earth are not innocent. No matter what we have done, or a child or, or an adult, we are not innocent. That's when it comes to sin. But again, salvation is always through a person. And in our case, Salvation is brought to us by the word of God and the life of Jesus Christ. Salvation is, is given to us as a gift. In Ephesians 2 and 8, it says salvation is by grace. By grace. This is an interesting thing. We take the word grace and it means the unearned, unmerited favor of God. Wow. We can't earn it. We can't produce it. But God is willing and able to forgive us because by his grace. We can't say that about people, right? But God is unbelievable when it comes to his people. We also see that God is eternal, as we know, and, and, and the spirit of God is eternal. The son of God is, is eternal. The, the, the Holy Spirit is eternal. 
So we see all these things that have happened over the centuries since the beginning. So much sin has been coming and done to people, with people, and for people. And yet God is willing to forgive. Wow. It's amazing that God is willing to forgive us. The story of Jesus on the cross gives us an example to go through all of that. Imagine God in the flesh could have just said one word and all of those people that were there that this causes death would, ever be, would either be dead or running in another direction. And yet he did this because it was the only way that we could be saved through what he did on the cross of Jesus, uh, of what he did for us. We also see, interesting as we look through this whole idea of the doctrine of salvation, that there are 15 words people have used to try to explain salvation or part of it. Listen to some of these words. Conversion, substitution, reconciliation, appropriation, remission, redemption, Regeneration, remutation, re 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 adoption, supplication, justification, sanctu sanctification, glory glorification, preservation, origin, and even other terms. All of these teach us that this, this is a great gift that God has given us, salvation. Because without it, we can't go to heaven. We can't be the person that God wanted us to be in the beginning. Willing to forgive and change us and make us a new person in Jesus Christ. Even the word conversion is an interesting word. Meaning something that has to do with our soul, our inner, inner part of our, of our body and our mind and so on. We see that conversion is an interesting word in the sense it, it's repentance is a, is something that we don't deserve it is not anything that we can buy or cause and so on all of this he did all of that for us on the cross and he made a way for us to be what we should never have been forgiven even we see in the word of god the gospel of john the baptist look what his message was to the people of the earth and the, and the people of Israel at that time. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, it gives us an idea that repentance does not come. Salvation does not come unless a sinner comes to repentance. A sinner realizes that he is unable and not worthy to go into heaven or even be saved. So there's a, 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 chant, a movement of a person realizing who he is or she is and that they need to be saved. They need to be forgiven and so on. And the interesting part of that story is it is ongoing. It's not once, not twice, not three times, but over and over again in our lives. And it's, it's sad because some people have been told about this and refuse to change. They refuse to ask forgiveness. And unfortunately, the Bible tells us they will go not to heaven, but to hell for eternity. So all of these things that we're talking about in regard to the doctrine of salvation tell us that God is a, a reconciler. He's, he's a, a, if we try to understand who he is, it's almost impossible that he would be able to forgive us and all those on our planet who have been here and even beyond, willing to forgive and make us a new Christian, a cre creation in Jesus Christ. All of this was done because God himself loved us that much. Sent his son. His son came for the, the whole story is we could not be forgiven by ourselves. We could not be changed by ourselves. Someone had to come. Some ungodly, and God himself sent his son to stay and become the one who paid the price for our sins. When we pray, we should thank God every single day that we pray and every time we pray for that fact that he is not only saving us, but forgiving us. And do we deserve it? 
No. But he loves us that much. We're going to stop here. And we're going to keep talking about this for a few more weeks. Because it's an amazing story that God, who can do all things, he could have actually said one word and we'd all be gone forever. Like we never were here. And yet he loves us that much that he was willing to go through all the pain and all the sacrifice that had to come so that you and I could be saved. So we'll see you next week and we'll continue this story. And again, to be honest, it's very hard to believe that someone would do that for us. And yet God did and is. God bless you.